My name is Calum, and in the studio with us, we have a special guest who's joining us today to talk about a few of the issues that are going on, not only in the Territory, but about some of our people out there as well. And that is Minister for Local Government, Housing and Community Development, Jerry McCarthy. Thank you very much for joining us today, Minister. You're welcome, Calum. And uh, yeah, greetings to all your listeners over that massive footprint that you cover. We've had you a few times in the studio already to talk about what you've been doing for the housing development that's been going around in Aboriginal communities all around the NT. And I'm sure you'll be here to uh, give us a bit more of an update on what's been happening and where you've been going. We've now ticked over uh, just over 1,500 homes for Indigenous Territorians that have been treated, either new homes, rebuilds, full upgrades, or the Room to Breathe program with the customisation. That's a good number, considering we're three years in. Mm -hmm. We've uh, got a significant pipeline of work that is going through the different stages of procurement to keep this work going so that communities will see work on housing every year. And uh, it's really pleasing for me to see as the Minister that the engagement with local people is increasing as well. We're starting to see 40% Indigenous engagement on the tools, on these construction sites right across the Northern Territory. We want to build that. We're heading to the community housing model. That's the objective where it'll be community controlled and community run Aboriginal housing. And these are great signs early in this program. The most successful thing is engaging local people. That, that's what it's all about. And uh, Aboriginal TV have done some great stories going out and covering uh, the stories on local employment training, local employment in terms of real wages, local employment in terms of great mentors showing their families that they're a part of this change in, in remote Aboriginal housing. So for the, for the stories. local employment, is it CDP employment or is it actual people getting apprenticeships and working fully through? No, this is employment on the tools with contractors. So we have very strict by local rules. So anybody winning government work has to have a minimum 30% Indigenous employment target. And we mandate that and we follow that. So we're tracking above that. But in terms of the, the time frame, and it was lessons learnt through good local decision making, communities have said, we don't want this all to happen overnight. We want it staged year to year so that there is a pipeline of works. Mm. And that's what we're doing. And so every year, communities are seeing more work. That provides a sustainable employment model. So the people who are working in their communities for these houses and the room to breathe and everything else, they will not obviously be going on with the businesses to the other communities. They'll be staying there, as you're saying, doing things for those houses. Um, will the employment still be solid and stable for them, though? This pipeline of works is so important now to start to build the skills and engage the people. And the elders are telling us we want our young people involved in this. My point to community is, though, the real bread and butter, the real money in a housing sector is when you manage the tenancies, you conduct the repairs and maintenance, and you've got a pipeline of construction work that's fed in. That's when you're managing every layer of the housing sector. But who will be running the business for it, though? Like who will be paying these people out when the, business, when the construction leaves and everything else and they're in charge of the community's houses themselves? Who will be the ones in charge? Well, we're encouraging the development of Indigenous business enterprises. And in these early years of this 10-year program, we've got select tenders. So government has really gone to making sure that locals have a stake in the game. So already you're seeing significant select tendering to Aboriginal organisations and they will be conducting the work. And then it's that element of the economy that will build, employing people, looking after infrastructure, growing infrastructure, and of course, innovation. In terms of a really good outcome at home was I was able to take the cabinet, the uh, Northern Territory cabinet, that's the executive level of government, to Borroloola and Robinson River in the Gulf Country for four days. The chief minister has designed this program and mandated that the cabinet goes out to various locations around the territory every couple of months and the local member hosts and these executive you know, government officers and their CEOs and staff actually stay in the community. And that's a great way to learn and to understand the people that we service, the people that we're making important decisions about. We've put on uh, town water, 
to two CLAs across the other side of the MacArthur River, which mm -hmm. is an amazing development. We built a new water treatment plant in Borrelula, and now that uh, some of the best water in the territory will be going into those two CLOs because before it, it was uh, very difficult running it off a, se a separate bore and a separate yeah, yeah. system that was 30 years old. We're yeah. seeing, uh, the, you know, the roads, we're seeing infrastructure in the town, and uh, and I was able to show the Cabinet what Borrelula needs now is another phase of land release where there's 39 lots of land that can be released in terms of the new subdivision, which will create a whole lot of private sector investment. Sure. And when you're talking to locals in Borrelula, you've got Aboriginal people that want to buy a block of land and build a house in Borrelula. Uh, now tell me a bit about, um, a bit of information here, something called the Tiwi Barge. Yeah. Yeah, tell me a bit about that. I saw it the other day in a shed. It's under okay. construction. Those people on the Tiwis or people that have visited would know there's a very important transport logistic between the two islands. And it is a, a small ferry that carries one vehicle and a number of passengers. And it uh, does a lot of work. Well, the local member, Lawrence Costa, he was advocating very strongly through the local government council, the Tiwi uh, council, to upgrade that and deliver a new vessel. It, it needed it, and so we were able to secure um, some really important funding, and, uh, and Lawrence is, uh, is now going to deliver what is a vastly improved vessel, a lot bigger. It will carry two vehicles or a small truck. It'll be surveyed to carry 35 people. Uh, it generates further employment. There's local guys over there with Coxon certificates already operating. That, uh, that ferry, it'll, it'll provide the opportunity for more jobs. And the old ferry will be able to be repurposed somewhere else on the islands to continue Fantastic. its work. Uh, well, any other things that you'd like to say while we have you on the air? Just it's great to be here uh, again and, uh, and the great work you do. Love coming to Darwin because I get to see Channel 4. That's great. Well, thank you very much for coming in, Minister. And we wish you the best of luck in the future as well. Thank you, Carl.